adjustable razor that adjusts to your skin and beard. The remarkable Super Blue Blade, all but unbelievable shaving comfort. And foaming, the cream of all instant lathers. From Philadelphia Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's the cadets of Army versus the Medis of Navy. Hello, everybody. This is Sir Gowdy with Paul Christman and Bob Neal as we bid you welcome to one of America's top sporting classics. Philadelphia is the host today. It may be the city of brotherly love, and all the players work for the same uncle, Uncle Sam, but there'll be no love lost today. As we move into Philadelphia Stadium, 100,000 fans will watch Army against Navy. And we have just a beautiful afternoon here. The temperature is near 60. Weather-wise, this is the best weather we've had for an Army-Navy game since 1946. The Army-Navy game was first moved from Franklin Field to Municipal Stadium here in 1936. The Academy's alternate is host for the game each year. Navy on the even years, Army on the odd years. And there's a look at the crowd of 100,000. Right down below you in the near side of your screen will be Navy. Across the way is the Army cheering section. And the Army mules are galloping out on the field. This is the 61st Army-Navy game. As Army has won 30, Navy has won 25. And uh, there are the mules of Army. Both squads have been warming up, have gone back to their locker room. Of course, for each team, the success or failure of the season will be wrapped up in one game. This is it. And there's the Army tank. Last year, Army suffered its worst defeat, 43 to 12 to Navy. And they've been burning for revenge ever since. We'll be talking along with Paul Christman here in just a moment. First of all, Paul, who uh, the former All-American at Missouri University will analyze the play for you today. Paul, they're really steamed up for this one. First, uh, we have decided we would discuss the usual pre-game uh, warm-up here because there's so much going on in the field. That's probably old Ironsides out there. But the Navy and Army are shooting each other up all over the field. A big tank just went by, as you probably saw. There's a ship of the Navy. And this pregame stuff goes on quite a bit. In fact, we were remarking when the, when the cadet corps marched on, everything was very solemn. But when they left, there was a grave in the middle of the field with a cross. We don't know how they got it in in full uniform, but there it was. And that's the way this goes every time in the pregame. Paul, for weeks, the 3,800 midships and 2,500 cadets have been getting ready for the game. Banners have been hung from all the buildings at both schools and beat Army at Navy and sink canoe you over at West Point. The build-up, the tension, is just about ready to be released here in about 12 minutes. And incidentally, this is a game in which you can throw the season records out the window, all the statistics. Many times, Army's been heavily favored to win. They've lost. And many times, Navy's been a favorite, and they've lost. The dope bucket gets upset here. As we said, each coach regards this one as their season. And uh, you'll be watching both cheering sections and everything goes on in the field. It has taken weeks and months to lead up to this game. There's the ship again, and they're firing right into the Army section over there. And they are being trailed by a submarine. Uh, I don't think this ship is going to go underwater or underground. But uh, we're having this real wild get, uh, start over here with, as we say, both corps participating. There's a submarine, as unlikely as it is, it has a couple of fins on the side, which are hard to see, diving plane. And the cadets of Army are going crazy on the far side there because they're being fired at by the Navy. One of the, uh, one of the other things we 
on here too. The Army marched on first, and later, as the Army was seated, the Navy came on, and they kept yelling. The Army kept yelling to get them out of Caden. I'm Kurt Gowdy. This is Paul Crispin. The fall with this beautiful weather today, both teams have good passers. Tom Blanda for the Army and Hal Spooner for the Navy. And both teams use the spread type of offense. You look for a wide open game. I certainly do, Kurt. And I'll tell you something. As we were discussing before the game, Spooner of Navy surprised us quite a bit last time we saw him against the Air Force. He has better than a 50% average. Navy is not considered a passing team. But when we saw them against the Air Force, I was very much impressed with the timing of Spooner's passes. He's not been a, an impressive looking guy, but he gets the ball there on time, which is very important, and they had a real fine passing game as we saw that day. It is seldom that the two teams come into an Army-Navy game with one man standing out. We're back on the field again as the uh, Army cheering section is roaring. The Navy boats going by. We'll be back here in a moment with more pregame activities here at Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. One more pleasure out of driving. Here's Happy, Esso's cheerful oil drop symbol of happy motoring to show you how to get it. Take a car. Your car. Add a tank full of the first premium gasoline created through atomic research. Esso Extra. Multiply. Esso Extra's outstanding combination of driving advantages by the millions of motorists who use it regularly. And you'll see why it's the one gasoline that puts the fun back in driving. Now subtract what you save every time you fill up with Esso Extra because it generally costs less than most other premiums. And what does it equal? Happy motoring. Yes, no matter how you figure it, SO Extra means happy motoring. Another reason why the SO sign is the world's first choice. The high jinx continues here in Philadelphia as we get ready for the Army Navy game. If you have followed our NCAA telecast this year, you know we give you an introduction of the starting lineup by taking you down to the field for a close-up look of the players. Now for this game, we thought you'd like to see the Army and Navy starters, not in a football headgear with a face mask, but in their uniforms at West Point in Annapolis, as they truly are the future officers of this United States. Now these introductions were filmed at West Point and Annapolis this past week. And first, for the Army lineup, let's go to Bob Neal at West Point. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Neal. I'm talking to you from in front of the Battle Monument at Trophy Point at West Point, the home of the United States Military Academy. I'd like you now to meet the Army team. And first, here's the captain of the Army team, number 64. My name is Al Vanderbush. I'm 62 and 215 pounds. My hometown is Midland Park, New Jersey. Now I'd like to meet the rest of the Army team. Thank you, Captain. The left end for Army number 87. I'm John Ellison. I'm six feet tall. I weigh 190 pounds. I'm presently from 48 Sands. And I understand that, John, your father was a West Pointer. Yes, sir, he is. We're mighty proud to have you and have had your father here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And our left guard today for Army will be number 62. I'm Mike Cass. I'm six feet tall, 205 pounds from Beaver, Pennsylvania. I thought maybe you were a Texan, Mike. No, sir. Pennsylvania. That's right. Good luck to you, son. Number 54, the center for Army. George Gowan. I'm 5'11", 190 pounds from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Thank you, sir. The inside tackle for Army, number 76. Dale Coons, I weigh 230 pounds, and six feet four feet tall, and I'm from Clearfield, PA. Thank you, Gene. And the outside tackle for Army, number 77. Bob McCarthy, I'm six foot two inches tall, I weigh 210 pounds, and from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And Bob is also a member of the Dean's List. Thank yeah. you, my boy. And one of the other outside tackles for Army, number 72. Jerry Clements, I'm six foot one, 220 pounds, my hometown is Queensbridge, New York. Thank you very much, Jerry. One of the lonesome ends for Army is number 85. Paul Zemeyer, 6'1", 180 pounds from Scooter Haven, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Paul. Number 80, another lonesome end. I'm Bob Fohart, 6 feet tall, 185 pounds from Tynesta, Pennsylvania. Not really so lonesome. No, sir. Thank you, sir. The quarterback for Army, number 18. Tom Bland, I'm 6'1", 173 pounds, and I'm from Youngwood, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Tom. The left halfback for Army today, number 45. Sure, $13, sir. 6'1", 185, from Allendale, New Jersey. 
Thank you, sir. And the right half, back number 16. Lynn Adams, 6,285 pounds from El Paso, Texas. And you are from Texas. That's right. Yes, sir. And the fullback from Army. No, New Scotts, North South Pennsylvania, and 5 feet 10 to tall, 190 pounds. Thank you very much, Al. Well, friends, that's the Army team. And a big day today, certainly, for the Army and the Navy. Now we'd like you to meet the Navy team. And let's introduce you to the captain of Navy, Joe Metalavich. Thank you, Bob. I'm number 38, Joe Matalavich, captain of the Navy team from Mahoney City, Pennsylvania. I'm six foot tall, weigh 195 pounds. And now I'd like you to meet our left end, number 88, Frank Dadlow from Winchester, Massachusetts. I'm five feet 11 inches tall, weigh 185 pounds. Our left tackle, number 75. And Al Driscoll from Walton, Massachusetts, I'm six foot one, 205 pounds. Our left guard, number 66, Steve Horace from Santa Monica, California. I'm six feet tall, 200 pounds. Our center, number 52. Frank Vistead from Smithtown, New York. I'm six foot two, 100, 205 pounds. Our right guard, number 62. I'm John Hewitt from Belvin, Pennsylvania. 5'11", 178 pounds. Our right tackle, number 76. My name's Ron Urchel. I'm from West Dallas, Wisconsin, and weigh 207 pounds. Our right end, number 82. I'm Jim Looper from Iowa City, Iowa, 6'2", 195. Our quarterback, number 12. I'm Harold Spooner from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, 6'170 pounds. Our left halfback, number 27, and everyone's All-American. My name is Joe Bellino. I'm from Winchester, Massachusetts. I am 5'9", inches tall, and weigh 177 pounds. Our right halfback, number 21. I'm John Pritchard, 6'3", 185. I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Thank you, John. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our Navy team. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are the fine young men representing our service academies. Army and Navy, the traditional football battle. And we're just seconds away from the kickoff, so let's go back up to Kurt Gowdy and Paul Christman. Paul Christman and Kurt Gowdy back in Philadelphia. And as you can hear, the house is going mad with this Army-Navy game coming up. We're waiting for the uh, coin flip to uh, take place. And while we are, we don't have enough time to give you the background on both teams. But we just want to mention one man who's going to be very prominent today, as you have read. And that is Joe Bellino, number 27 of the Navy. Everyone in the country has his eye on Joe because he has been the most fabulous fact that they've had in this part of the country in years. Now here's Kurt Gowdy for the coin flip. All right, the captains are moving out to midfield. The referee today will be Dave Kaufman at Johns Hopkins. Let's get out of the field for the talk. Paul, it's been a nice meeting you, Captain Gibson. Captain Gibson. Boys, I want you to shake that Captain Matt Alabi. All right, Joe. All right. Now, boys, will you come in a little closer? I'd like to present Mr. Henry Hornell, who is our back judge today, and he's from New York University. Mr. Ice is our field judge, and he's from Carnegie Tech. Mr. Wallet Coffey is our headlinesman, and he's from Rutgers. And Mr. Harold Geigas on the end, and he's from Temple, is our umpire. On the side, boys, we have our timekeeper right over here. The man with the white hat is Mr. Wallet Gurry from Union. And in the middle is, is Mr. Jim Henry, the athletic director of LaSalle. And on the end is Ed Myers from Temple. They're both alternates. Now we're going to talk. You're going to call it. We'll also agree now that the winner of the toss will get the ball in case of a tie game. Is that agreeable? Right. All right, will you call it? Hit! Hit! It is tails. You are the winner, and good luck to you. All right, they want to receive. You have a choice of goal. All right, will you turn this way, boys? Much good luck to both of you boys. We're ready to go. Okay. We'll be set for the kickoff between Army and Navy at Philadelphia Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And now let's go down to Bob Neal. Well, we'll have the kickoff in a few seconds. Here it is, Thanksgiving weekend. Traditionally, the time to begin Christmas shopping in earnest. And if you're looking for a real good gift idea, here's a brand new one from L&M. Here's Mike Stewart with the details. Hi. This year there are two ways to give L&M. These attractive holiday gift cartons, and new this year, 
two cartons of L&M King with a free Christmas record attached. A 33 and a third RPM recording of five favorite Christmas carols. Sunny and old time harmony by our L&M Quartet. Listen. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Sound of Christmas, the taste of L&M, brought together in this special holiday gift bag. You buy two cartons of L&M King and get our Christmas records free. Army is in white. They'll be kicking off. Navy will be spreading out in the dark jerseys in receiving formation. 100,000 at the game today. Number 21. Is John Pritchard for Navy. And number 27 will be Joe Bellino. They'll be trying to boot it away from Bellino. And the game is underway. The clock won't start until the ball is set. It comes down to Bellino on the four. He's up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, the 25. Still on his feet at the 30, 35. And down in the 37, he nearly broke away. And that shows you the type of runner Bellino is. Tremendous balance with those powerful legs. Very hard to knock down. Paul Zemida brought him down. Navy's ball on their 36. They'll have Spooner quarterback, number 12. Bellino, 27 at left half. Matt Lavich, 38 at fullback. And Pritchard, Pritchard is the flank back. He split wide to the right. And breaking in to hit Bellino for the loss is John Ellerson, number 87. The Army in. It looked like that play developed a little faster than it was supposed to because he actually got out ahead of his blockers there. The defensive end had nothing to do but take him right in his arms as he came out. Second down, 15 for the Navy on their 31. Pritchard comes out as a flank back. Double wing, actually a double flank. That's Spooner being hit. Down he goes for another loss. Pouring in there, number 54, and uh, that is... Yell in the center of number 76. Dale Coons, the tackle of Army. Army pasted last year, 43 to 12. Their worst beating by Navy. They're out for revenge today. Navy has a third down and 21. Ron McKean's coming at fullback for the Navy. Pritchard is the flank back. And here is Bellino. He was uh, looked like a quick kick. Down he goes back on the 19. Bob McCarthy broke through. Bellino has quick kicked 11 times this year for an average of 47 yards. I don't know whether that was a fake or whether he was rushed so hard that he thought he'd be taking a chance by quick kicking. Sure, it looked like a fake development. He wanted to obviously have him drop back for the impending quick kick and then fake it, but they were ready for it. Joe Blackgrove is deep for Army and safety. Fourth down and 28 for Navy. And Greg Mather, number 85 and end, is going to boot it for the Navy, kicking against a slight wind. It is bouncing on the Navy 45, taken by Black Rovey, fumbles, and Navy recovers. Now he was hit on that high bounce. Navy has Ron Urschel, number 76, recovering the fumble. The kick from the scrimmage 34, and so Navy made its own break. Navy on the Army 47. Pritchard is the flank back to the left of your uh, picture now. Ball is given off to the fullback machine on a counterplay or a cross -butt. He drives inside of the Army 45 to the Army 44. He was stopped by Bob McCarthy, number 77, the Army right tackle. And Matt Lavage, number 38, as we just saw, checked back into the backfield for Navy. Second down, 7-0. Navy's ball. Here's Pritchard. He'll always be the flanking back. The pitch out goes to Matt Lavage, and he is stormed under, perhaps for a loss. It was Bob McCarthy and George Jowen in on the tackle for Army. With a passing down coming up, and that Army line charging so hard, they haven't even been dented yet. Wouldn't be a bad idea with a draw play right here. Army with a five-man line up front. They give the ball to Bellino, and Bellino trying to slice. is stopped at the 45-yard line, and Army has been rough. He tried to trap on that play, and that 
defensive tackle and guard didn't move it in. Didn't take the fake at all. It looks like that Army line has come to play. All right, Greg Mather has come into the game for Navy, number 85. He's their punter. It's fourth down and eight to go for Navy. Twice they've had the ball and twice they've been stopped. Joe Blackgrove is a deep man, a little fellow, a scoot back for the Army. He's back on his eight-yard line. Mather is booting for the coffin corner. The ball is taken on the 20-yard line, coming up to the 25, up to the 30 is Adams. And Glenn Adams making a fine run back of nearly 15 yards on that punt. Runs it back to the Army 35. And now Army puts the ball in play for the first time. Kicks and scrimmage of 21 yards. Army backfield will be Tom Blanda, number 18, quarterback. Kirschenbauer at left half, 45. Ruchat the fullback, 31. And Adams, number 16, at right half. They don't have the lonely end out. Blanda to Adams. Adams going wide. Up to the 40, and driven out of bounds on the 46-yard line. Number 16, Glenn Adams from El Paso, Texas. He was stopped by John Hewitt, number 62 of the Navy. And that's a first down for Army and our first first down of the game. No lonely end. Tight backfield, as you can see. Unbalanced line left. Ball comes to Kirschenbauer. Kirschenbauer piled up by Steve Hoy and Frank Mistress. Hoy, number 66. Down at the bottom of that pile. And also number 62, Hewitt. Now that's a little indication of the Navy defensive strength because that was a real power play there with two backs ahead of it and they didn't pick up much yardage. Second down, nine to go for the Army on their 47. They're not using the lonely end thus far. Trying to drive wide is Adams, and he was tripped up on a fine defensive play there by 52, Frank Vistard of Smithson, New York. Stopped on the 48-yard line of Army. Third down, eight to go. No score in the game, the early minutes. A beautiful, sunshiny day, as you can see. And we've had furious defensive play so far. Navy's been stopped twice. Army's picked up one first down. Let's see what they do on third down. Land is fading. Fires out to the right. It's good at the 45. And in the Navy territory goes Paul Zemida. Pennsylvania boy, a junior, 180-pounder, who plays the lonely end. He was driven out by John Pritchett. That's another Army first down. Two in a row. They have a first down on the Navy, 38. Pass was good for 14 yards. Unbalanced line left. Landed Adams, Adams at the 35, and stopped at the 34 or 33 yard line of Navy by John Hewitt, who met him head on. Spotted at the 34 yard line. A gain of four yards, second down, and six to go. Army's on the move. They have driven from their 35 to the Navy 34. Landa brings them up. Still not using that lonely end. And hitting up the middle this time, Kirschenbauer stopped by Jim Looper and Ron Urschel. Now on the Navy 33 with Army in possession. Third down and five to go for the Army. The Mida moving over, the strong side end. Landa gives the ball to Adams, and Adams is hit on the Navy 31 by John Hewitt again. And Frank Dadlio, senior left in from Winchester, Massachusetts. Now we have a fourth down and three to go for Army. Fourth and three, the cadets are on the Navy 31. Paul Stanley, number 40, has come in for the Army, and he's dropping back in front formation. There's Bellino, number 27, the safety man for Navy. <laughs> The high pass, angling for the far corner, and what a kick! It's out on the one-yard line. And that's what you call nailing the lid on the coffin, as Stanley boots it out on the Navy one-yard line to put Navy in a bad hole here. Navy ball, first down on their one-yard line. Cal Spooner will be back in at quarterback for the Navy, number 12. 
Molino, 27 at left half. McKeon, 36 at fullback. And Pritchard, 21 at right half. Here's Pritchard coming out, number 21, the flank back. We give the ball to Bellino. Bellino at the 5, at the 10. Left to the 25, to the 30. Still on his feet. He's in the Army territory, and he brings him out of the hall. down on the Army 42-yard line, and Army is going to talk it over. And right now, it's time out here at Philadelphia Stadium in Philadelphia with a score, Navy nothing and Army nothing. dealer proudly announces Esso and Humble join hands to create America's leading energy company to serve you better coast to coast now with quality products, outstanding values and fine service from the great new nationwide Humble Oil and Refining Company at more than 30,000 happy motoring service stations, including your Esso dealers. Happy reminds you the Esso sign will continue to bring you everything you need for happy motoring. Well, Stop Bellino has been the cry of Army for the last uh, few weeks, and Bellino nearly broke loose for a 99-yard run there. 57 yards, Paul. Well, that's a perfect indication of how he runs. He's probably the, uh, the best lateral runner uh, since Charlie Trippy, and he carries a little more weight than Trippy, and he's also a little stockier. That's Pritchard, the flanking back, number 21. They give the ball this time to Matt Alavage. As he goes to the 37-yard line of the Army, Bob McCarthy and Paul Zemida stopped him. Game of five, second down, five to go for Navy. We have no score, six minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period. Army and White, if you just joined us. Navy a few moments ago had the ball on their one-yard line. Now they're in Army territory. Fading a Spooner. Throwing, it is good to the 25-yard line to Joe Bellino. Get that to the flank back. 21, Pritchard, who is flanking wide. That fast pattern was just a straight hook about 10 yards deep to the flanking man. That's another Navy first down around the Army 26. And hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped is Bellino. This time on the Army 28. The tackle was made by John Ellerson, number 87. Army's left end from Hampton, Virginia. This type of thing is very bad psychologically for Army because with that kick out on the one-yard line, you almost feel that you're home free. You've got them pent up in there, and then have, have them pop out for 60 yards is really a rough blow. Pritchard is flanking left. Spooner's fading. Throws. It's good at the 20 and out of bounds. On the 18-yard line is the end looper. Jim Looper from Iowa City, Iowa, number 82. George Kirschenbauer drove him out of bounds. The sideline pattern, and as we mentioned before the game, Spooner's timing is very good on his pass. His, uh, the ball he throws is not the best in the world, but it gets there on time, and this is the most important thing in passing. They have a third down now on the Army 19. The pass is overthrown that time, intended for Looper, number 82 at the 10-yard line. Lynn Blumhardt, number 27, the Army defensive back, knocked that one down. And coming into the game of 72, Gary Clement, going out as number 77, Bob McCarthy. All right, we have a big fourth down play right now for the Navy. Fourth and three on the Army 19-yard line. Pritchard flanking outside of his right end. And Spooner running very close to the first down. Spooner 
Number 12, the Navy quarterback. We're going to have a timeout by referee Kaufman and our first measurement of the game. Well, let's watch it. Number 38 is the Navy captain, Joe Matalavich. Army will either hold or Navy will keep the drive going. That's a Navy first down. Back, one of their linebackers, and also Bob McCarthy, number 77. It is second down and six to go for Navy. We have four minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the first period. No score. They put Pritchard out as a flank back again. Here's Spooner fading. Throws. An incomplete pass. And uh, may have an illegal uh, receiver there. Let's see, though. No penalty marker down right now. The only question was, Kurt, whether that ball hit him on the fly or on the ground. The official was ruled it hit him on the it hit the ground before it got to That's it. Right. It would have been that. Hit him, uh, hit him uh, on the uh, grass before he touched it. Pritchard flanking out again. Third and six for Navy. Coming wide is Molino now throws, and they're out of bounds. An Army man was out, and also Meyer was out of bounds. So that'll bring up a fourth down. Navy's ball on the Army 12-yard line, fourth down. And as you can see, the ball is slightly in from the near sideline with an angle if they want to go for a field goal. Greg Mather has come into the game. There's the tape. He's the place-kicking specialist of Navy. Cal Spooner will hold, and the ball will be spotted on the 18-yard line. A slight angle from the near sideline. The kick is up, and it is no good, just to the left. No good, says referee Kaufman. And so that drive of 87 yards comes to a stop. Bellino set the drive up when he took the ball on the Navy one-yard line and raced 57 yards into Army territory, nearly breaking away for the longest run from scrimmage in the history of an Army-Navy game. Army's ball on their own 20. Their backfield will be Blanda, number 18, at quarterback. Kirschenauer, 45 at left hand. Russo, 31 at fullback. And Adams, number 16, at right hand. Navy is checking in their second line. They'll have Kellner, Driscoll, Falconer, Lucci, Bonsaito, Fitzgerald, and Mather in the line. Vic Meyer is going to be in the secondary. John Zenia will be in the fullback defensively. And here's Army up. Surprise has been they haven't used the lonely in much. Landa with a big pile up to Ruchat. Bruce Schatz is the workhorse of the Army backfield. And there's a loose ball with Navy taking over. And down at the bottom of that pile is Burns on title. Second time of the game, Navy has recovered an Army fumble. This time they have the ball on the Army 23. Twelves in the game, the quarterback, Spooner, gives the ball off to Vic Meyer. Meyer stopped at the 23-yard line by Al Vanderbush, Army's number 64, and their All-American guard, one of the co-captains. I rather expected them to throw on first down there because it's a great down to throw after a fumble, right on the first down. Here's Spooner. 
After Hughes, that's a sensational catch by Al Hughes, number 47. He's the Navy basketball captain, as you would imagine. He has an outstanding pair of hands. He was a flanking back. Glenn Adams is right on him, but Hughes made the grab. It's on the Army 18-yard line. Now third down and five to go for Navy. Al Hughes flanking. Spooner again. On the nine or eight-yard line. And there is a penalty marker going down. As Mather, number 85, grabbed the pass. But here is a penalty marker down. They're talking to number 36, Ron McKeon. The eight-yard line. Put it half the distance to the goal line. A personal foul against Army. When a foul takes place inside the 20 or 15-yard penalty, it is half the distance to the goal. Now Navy has a first down and goal to goal on the Army four-yard line. Polino has that Hughes flanking. It's to Bellino. Coming wide. And he's over. Joe Bellino scores his 18th touchdown of the season. Number 27, the all-time leading scorer in Navy history. He has scored 18 touchdowns this year. That is his 110 points. Brooke Buzz Boy's old Navy record. Frank Viston will snap the ball. Red Mather will attempt the kick. And holding will be Hal Spooner. The kick is no good. It is time out here at Philadelphia Stadium in Philadelphia with the score Navy 6 and Army nothing. And now coming up next, some action shots of our broadcasting partner, Paul Christman. So watch closely. Behind every champion, there's a secret. And that great passer is Paul Christman, former University of Missouri All-American. What's the secret of good passing, Paul? Good blocking. As for my secret, I teach them to carry the ball up around the shoulders so they can get it away fast. And for accuracy and good balance, point your lead foot right at the target and let her fly. Yes, behind every champion, there's a secret. And L&M has found the secret that unlocks the flavor. Flavor that lets your taste come alive. In today's L&M, with its patented filtering process, fine tobaccos can be blended. Blended, blended, blended. Not to suit a filter, but to suit your taste. For friendly flavor, I reach for L&M. L&M has found the secret the flavor Navy will kick off and deep for Army is Joe Blackrow. A little scat back. He's on the five-yard line. Greg Mather will boot for the Navy as Navy had just scored with two minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the first period. They recovered a fumble in four plays, marched 23 yards for the touchdown. Joe Bellino who scored three touchdowns last year against the Army, has scored the first touchdown of this game. Black Grove on the 12-yard line, comes up to the 20. Two Navy men on him as they haul him down on the 23-yard line. Dick Fitzgerald and number 80, Gary Kellner cover the kickoff for Navy. I'm going to put it on the Army 22. Army's ball, first down. Army has landed 18 at quarterback. Kirschenbauer 45 at left half. Ruchak 31 at fullback. And Adams on the 16 at right half. Still sticking with that tight formation. It goes to Adams. He stopped at the 25 yard line. Army has played fairly conservative so far. The tackle made by Vern Von Seidel from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Sophomore, number 61 in the Navy line. Second down, seven to go for the Army. A minute and a half left here in the first period. Now they've got the lonely end out, Zemida. 
The ball goes to Ruchat, the fullback. Army runs that belly or drive play a lot with the quarterback giving to the fullback or the quarterback taking it out of his stomach and then going into some other kind of play after. Greg Mather and George Huffman made the tackle for Navy. Third down, four to go for Army. The clock moving with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Remember, Army has the wind at its back in the first period. The lonely end is out, Zemida. In motion is Kirschenbauer. And there's a Navy man charging. Number 84, Larry Graham, the left tackle. With the penalty marker down, it is going against Navy. The legal procedure. First down. In that moment of anxiety, maybe just enough to keep an Army drive going because they had third and seven prior to this. In motion again is Kirschenbauer. Army's ball, first down. Landa pitching out and falling down, as you saw losing his footing, was Glenn Adams, number 16. George Huffman, number 77, came in a fall on top of him. Greg Mather, 85, was trying to turn the play in. The loss of a yard. Second down, 11 to go for the Army. Navy's out in front, 6 nothing. We're in the last 20 seconds of the first period. Zemida going out as a lonely end, number 85. In motion, Adams. Landa fading. The pass wide open is Kirschenbauer, and he's up to the Army 44-yard line. Wayne Payne Hardison, number 48 tackle, number 45, George Kirschenbauer. And it's the end as a measure trying to establish the first down. It's the end of the first quarter with the score, Navy 6 and Army nothing. Here comes Christmas gift goof number one, wrong size. Here's gift goof number two, wrong style. And goof number three, a gift he can't use. There's one sure way not to goof this Christmas. Give paper make pens. Paper make pens make goof proof gifts. There's never a worry about size or color or style. And a paper make is a gift everyone can use. This is the famous Capri Mark III. Here's the petite and lovely Lady Capri. Or give the luxurious Capri Mark IV in gleaming jeweler's finish. All paper made pens are unconditionally guaranteed. If the paper mate you give doesn't perform, we'll replace it. So don't goof this Christmas. Get paper made pens at the paper mate gift bar. Paper made gifts are goof proof. Kurt Gowdy with Paul Christman again here in Philadelphia as we've come to the end of the first quarter with Navy out in front 6-0. Army has just picked up the first down. They're on their 44-yard line. Army in white, Navy in the dark jersey. They got the lonely end out. In motion. As a back. As Ruchat. The Army fullback, 190-pound wrestler, by the way, Eastern Intercollegiate heavyweight wrestling champ, carries the ball to the Army 48-yard line. Tackle made by Hardison and Matt Alavi. Have O'Connor in at right halfback. There he is, Jimmy O'Connor, spinning up to the 50-yard line. He's from Stoughton, Massachusetts. He was tackled by Ron Urschel, number 76, and Jim Looper, the right end, number 82. Navy has its first string line back in the game. And Jim Looper played a fine defensive end on that because he had a couple of blockers around his midsection and still managed to get through for the tackle. Third down and four to go for the Army. Landa faking the handoff, throwing out in the flat. It was intended for Paul Zemida, 85 covered by Ron McKeon, number 36. And that brings up a fourth down for the Army, and four to go. Army had moved the ball from its 22-yard line to midfield. 
Joe Bellino will be dropping back. In front formation is Paul Stanley, number 40 for the Navy. There's Bellino. And they're trying to boot it away from him. Hits on the Navy 30 and goes out of bounds on the Navy 29-yard line. But you can bet those Army kickers have orders. Keep it away from Bellino. 21-yard kick from scrimmage. Bellino is the most famous midshipman at West Point in many, many years. For the last few weeks, his name has been hung around on banner. Stop Bellino at West Point. And they haven't stopped him so far. Navy's ball on their 29 with Hal Spooner calling signals. They have a first down. Pritchard is the flank back at the top of your screen. Spooner fakes to Bellino, throws, nearly intercepted by Army with a wide open field ahead with George Kirschenbauer. And if he could have held on to that one, he might have been on his way. Kurt, I believe that's why all passes are trained to throw as hard as possible so that the man who is to receive it doesn't catch it. It makes it pretty difficult for the defensive man, and he really rifled that one. Bill Whitehead came in as center number 50 for the Army. Pritchard is out wide. Ball is given to Bellino, dropped for the loss. Hit by Paul Zemida, number 85, the Army in. And we're getting fine defensive end play on both sides because there again, he had a blocker right in his midsection, shoved him off and made that tackle. That's real good play. Third down and 14 for Navy on their 25. Thalska's 21 has come in for Kirschenbauer in the Army secondary. There's a fake draw play, and now it turns into a screen pass. Coming up to the 25, up to the 30, Bellino, and Bellino jumped on his 35. We had a fake draw, and then the screen off the fake draw. As Navy uses some real trickery, Joe Bellino, number 27, was stopped by Roger Zalkus on the Navy 35-yard line. The play gained uh, 10 yards, but Navy still has fourth and four to go. Army is dropping back. Black Grove, Blumhart. In front formation is Greg Mather for the Navy on his 21. The beauty, Black Grove watches it hit, now takes it on the 18. Oh, what a tackle there. Number 62, Mike Cass, or a John Hewitt downfield to make that tackle. 47-yard kick from Scrimmy as Army puts the ball in play on their 21-yard line. Although we've only listed that wind as 10 miles an hour from the right of your screen, it looks like it's gotten to be a little more than that because the punch from the left had been rather short, and that was a fine, long kick there with the wind. Zalesus and O'Connor, now the Army halfback. They have the lonely end out, and Navy is asking for time. So it is time out here at Philadelphia Stadium in Philadelphia with the score, Navy six and Army nothing. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Here's a gift that's a beauty and a winner for friends, family, any man on your Christmas list. The Gillette Executive Adjustable Razor. It adjusts instantly at a turn of the dial to match any combination of skin and beard. Richly gold-plated, it comes in this modern case. Price, $5. Here's another winner. Gillette Super Blue Blades and Gailey Holiday Wrap Packages. 30 for $2 or 50 for $3.45. Or this handsomely packaged gift set including the Gillette Adjustable Razor, Super Blue Blades, and Foamy Instant Lather. Only $2.75. Stocking gifts or inexpensive remembrances? Well, how can you top the $1.95 Adjustable Razor or a package of Gillette Super Blue Blades? Be sure to look for the complete line of Gillette Christmas gifts from $0.69 cents or less to $5 or more. Twelve minutes remaining in the first half. Navy is leading 6-0. They recovered an Army fumble on the Army 23 and drove in four plays for a touchdown with Joe Bellino carrying the ball over. Two minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first period. Army's backfield will be Blanda, 18 at quarterback. Zales is 21 at one half. Jimmy Connors, number 20, the other half. Bruce at the fall. And Zemida's the lonely end. Zales just in motion. There's the fullback, Bruce Trying the middle. Frank Biston stopped him. 
And John Hewitt, number 62, also listed from Smithton, New York, a senior, 223. Navy's line outweighs Army about 11 pounds a man. Army's ball, second down, eight to go. Jowins come back in at center for the Army, replacing Whitehead. They lump some in, split out. They give the ball to the fullback, Rushaps again. Navy is plugging up that middle. Rushaps has carried the ball twice as much as any Army back this year. 146 times, averaging four yards a carry. He's a hard driver. He's lost only four yards all season long. Third down and seven. The lonely end split out. Landa pitching to Connors. Connors out of bounds on the Army 26-yard line, driven out by Dadlio, Frank Dadlio, number 88 from Winchester, Massachusetts, who was a teammate with Joe Bellino in high school. They played together quite some time. We now have a fourth down and five to go. blanda has gone out and Stanley replaces, and there's Bellino dropping back as a safety man for Navy, back in his own territory on his 40. Stanley's booting, hits on the 50 to the 40. It is dead on the Navy 42-yard line. Jowell in the center, 54 had gone down to cover the kick. Bellino wasn't taking any chances of trying to scoop up a uh, wobbly ball on that bounce. 34-yard kick from the scrimmage. Navy takes over on the Navy 42. Cal Spooner comes back in at quarterback for the Navy, number 12. There's part of the crowd of 100,000 here today in perfect football weather. Pritchard is flanking to the right. Bellino is a wingback. Fading is Spooner. Incomplete at the 50-yard line. Pass intended for Pritchard, number 21. He was covered by Blumhart, number 27. You know, one thing we might make note of, I don't know whether the teams are trained in vibration or what, but they obviously cannot hear too well from the quarterbacks. There hasn't been a moment of silence in the stadium since the game started. As you can hear, constant yelling. So those quarterbacks must be really barking those signals. Navy has a flank back, Pritchard, and Bellino is a wing back. There's Bellino in motion that goes to him. Bellino is brought down, stopped at the Navy 44-yard line by Paul Zemida. He's number 85. And as Paul Crispin told you, we've had brilliant in play on the part of both teams. They've been turning those plays in. That's their duty with the secondary and other linemen coming up to make the tackle in. Third down and eight to go for Navy. Navy out in front, 6 nothing. Nine minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. Pritchard flanking again. Spooner fading. Is throwing. It's complete at the 40-yard line. And down to the 38-yard line is Jim Looper. Stopped by Jim Connor. Spooner hit him right down the middle. Number 82 from Iowa City, Iowa, is Jim Looper, Navy's fine right end, who caught 19 passes this year, the leading Navy pass receiver. And Spooner very, very wisely changed his pattern on that one because he's been throwing to the outside the entire ball game. That time he threw, threw over the middle and it was wide open. Navy's ball on the Army 38. Richard flanked again. And they give it off to uh, Bellino. Bellino coming over to 35 inside the Army 30. He had to be tripped up by Blumhart. Bellino, look at those calves on him, number 27. His calves are 18 inches in circumference. He is not too heavy above his waist, but look at his calves as he crouches over. Sometimes he has to slit his football pants. They're so tight on those bulging muscles that he gets cramps in his legs. That's where his power comes. Second down and a yard to go. It's a cross buck and driving to the 26-yard line is Matt Alavi, the Navy fullback. That should be good enough for a Navy first down. Bob Fullhart stopped him. And there you saw an intangible that a back of Bellino's type can cause in that a fake to him will move that defense over as we saw there and open the play for the fullback who's coming back the other way. Makes it so much easier all the way around. Navy has just come in to referee Kaufman and asked for time. North Carolina 14, Virginia nothing at the end of the first quarter. 
for a score we have today. And we're timeout now with Navy out in front. It is timeout here at Philadelphia with a score. Navy six and Army nothing. Tough to buy presents for men, this gal knows better. Here's a gift that has everything any man needs for superb shades. A Gillette adjustable razor, a dispenser of super blue blades, and foamy instant lather. Attractively gift boxed at only $2.75. Here's another natural, a generous supply of razor blades. A gift wrap pack of 50 double-edged Gillette super blue blades costs only $3.45, or $30 for $2. As stocking gifts or inexpensive general giving, a 195 adjustable razor or individual dispensers of Super Blue. These practical Gillette gifts assure clean, comfortable shaves and arousing thank you from those who receive them. It's easy to shop for them. A nearby store has Gillette gifts from 69 cents or less to $5 or more. Kurt Gowdy and Paul Christman again along with Bob Neal at Philadelphia. Navy's ball on the Army 26. There's Wayne Harden, the Navy coach, his second year as head coach. First down for Navy. They're leading 6 0. We have 8 minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the half. Pritchard is flanking left. Fading a spooner. Fires to Pritchard at the 25, and he's out of bounds on the Army 22 yard line. John Pritchard who is on the Navy track team very fast. He's caught 16 passes coming into the game from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Ron McKeon, 36, checks into the Navy backfield, replacing Joe Matalabra. Second down, four for the Navy. And there are the midshipmen. They also have a new football in the game. Number 54, middle man in the defense for Army, George Jowen. Pritchard flanking again, driving his Bellino. Look at him go with two, three men. He actually lost ground as he ripped out of tackles. He was to the 17, but it shows you that power he has as two or three men couldn't contain him. He stopped on the 21 yard line. A yard gain. There's the Navy GOAT. Watching Mr. Bellino in action. Navy's ball, third down and five to go. Pritchard is flanking. Bruner is fading. Nearly intercepted, and the Navy have it. They do on the nine yard line. Deflected by an Army defender and caught by Pritchard, 21. A flanking back of Navy. Looked like a man up the middle deflected that pass, uh, either Bloomhart or maybe the fullback Ruchat. Now it's first down and goal to go for Navy. They got a break on that one. Richard flanking again, first and nine for a touchdown. Here is Spooner rolling out. He's hit and dragged down by Bob Fullhart, number 80, who broke through, a junior from Tionesta, Pennsylvania. Bob Fullhart nabbed him back on the 24-yard line. We continue to have that very fine defensive end play, and there's where it really pays off. And there's Dale Hall, the Army coach, also in his second year as head coach. Both these coaches are young. Second down, 24 to go for a touchdown for Navy. Pritchard flanking wide. Spooner fading. A screen pass to Bellino. He's at the 25 to the 20, and tripped over one of his own men, Larry Graham, number 84. Bellino has dropped at the 17-yard line of the Army, or the 18-yard line. Third down and 18 to go. Joe Bellino, a senior. Third down, 18 to go for a Navy touchdown. We have six minutes left to play in the first half. Navy's ahead, 6-0. This time it's the draw play. And uh, moving through is the fullback. Ron McKeon as he hits to the 10-yard line. So far, that was probably the smartest call of the ball game there because it's a real passing down, third and long yardage, and that trap play is a beautiful one to call in that position because that defensive tackle is rolling to the outside to get at that passer. It's a perfect time to call the trap. 
Zamida has checked in in place of Fullhart. Here's Bellino coming out, and Greg Mather, 85, their place kicking specialist, is in. Looks like they might go for a field goal. The ball spotted on the 16, almost in the middle of the field. They missed one earlier. The kick is up, and that one is good. Mather boots it, and Navy takes a 9 nothing lead. Mather had earlier missed the field goal and an extra point. And so, Navy will kick off and Army will receive. Now we like to say, young men, be a man among men. Now you can choose the Army's combat arm, infantry, armor, or artillery if you qualify. When you select one of the Army's combat arms, you get the additional choice of overseas area or an airborne unit. Remember, choose the Army's combat arm, infantry, armor, or artillery. See your local United States Army recruiter today. And there are the West Pointers trying to root their team on as Navy has dominated since the early minutes of the game. Joe Blackrow, 44, is a deep man for Army. Greg Mather will kick off for the Navy. He's number 85. He has a wind at his back in this quarter. Ball hits on the 20. Pritchard watches it bounce. And it is picked up by Blackrow on the 5. Up to the 15, up to the 20, and down on the Army 21-yard line. John Zenya, number 44, went down under the kick. We now have four minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. A timeout is going to be called. Navy is asking for time here. Navy out in front, and with this timeout, let's bring in Paul Christmas. For those of you who wondered why the Army man picked up that bounding kickoff there, even though it was rolling around, there are some viewers who do not know that any kickoff of that type is a free ball and can be recovered by the kicking team, and the ball is in their possession wherever they recover it if they do. And this is one kick you can't wait to see if it rolls over the goal line or rolls out of bounds with the uh, opponents rushing downfield. It's one of those things that has to be picked up rather quickly decision has to be made either fall on it or pick it up and run and this is exactly what he did and returned the ball in pretty good shape down the sideline Paul just looking at the statistics Navy has seven first downs in the game Al Hughes by the way is being helped off the field the uh, Navy halfback, captain of their basketball team. Army has three first downs. We have 13 passes intercepted by the Navy, and they've completed eight. Spooners at eight out of 13. Army's at two out of three. All right, Army's ball on their 21-yard line. In motion is Zalkus. Landa gives the ball to Jimmy Connors, and with that gaping hole open, Connors picks up the first down to the Army 33-yard line hit by Vic Meyer. And with Army getting out with a little elbow room out here to the 35-yard line approximately, we should see Blanda start throwing before too long because time is growing nigh and a half, and Blanda is a fine passer. He's only attempted three passes today. He keeps the ball and is dropped on the 36-yard line. Beautiful shoestring tackle by uh, number 84, Larry Graham. And also 85, Greg Mather. Clock is moving with four minutes remaining in the first half. Navy out in front, nine to nothing. Zamida, the lonely end, split wide. Dale's just in motion. They give that ball to Jim Connors as he tried to slice back. Dick Eckert has come in at quarterback now for the Army. Larry Graham, number 84, dropped him. And that last play that was stopped there is the previous one that was run for about a 15 or 20-yard gain, and you can't blame a quarterback for going back to a successful effort. Third down now, three to go. Eckert rolling out. And he's uh, hit. Is it a fumble? A penalty marker's down back on the 30. He was hit. And that's intentionally grounding a forward pass. That'll be a five-yard penalty and a loss of a down from the spot of the pass. 
Kurt, every passer will always argue with an official on that play because most of them feel they can throw the ball even when they're down on their knees. And he will claim that he had his arm moving forward and it was trying to pass. But the official sees it differently. They lose the down and the penalty is from the spot of the pass, five yards. So that brings up a fourth down. Army's ball on the Army 25 and they have a fourth and 18. Confirmation is Paul Stanley. Vic Myers deep for Navy. He just got it away, nearly blocked. Taken on the Navy 45 and hit on the Navy 46 yard line was Meyer. Number 72 and 64. Al Vanderbush and number 72 is Gary Clements for the Army. 31 yard kick from scrimmage. Navy's ball on their 46. First down. They're ahead. We have two minutes, 55 seconds left to go. Once again, Navy is asking for time. What you just saw there, uh, we've mentioned previously in the season, was Blanda throwing off of what is known as a play number pass. Instead of dropping back straight and throwing into the pocket, he makes a couple of fakes to the men going into the line and then drops back to pass. However, he chose third down and long yardage to do this. And this is the time, of course, when the defensive team is looking for a pass and is not so susceptible to those fakes which he is going through. In other words, this is actually delaying the passer and getting back there when uh, he should be dropping straight back and throwing. Friends, later this evening, ABC will bring you the fight of the week. Tonight's attraction will match heavyweights Billy Hunter and Mike DeJohn in a 10-round bout from New York's Madison Square Garden. This presentation is another exciting sports event brought to you by ABC. I should have added also that that play number pass, of course, is most effective on first down when they are looking for a running play. It's a fake running play and a pass. Navy has its first team in again. Spooner throws to the flank back. Pritchard is up to the 50 and into Army territory. Just a quick stand up and throw out into the flat. And that's a very fine call, too, because obviously his spread man has come back and said my defensive man is playing me off five yards if you can flip it to me fast i'll have a little time to maneuver and that's just what he did we saw spooner have a great day against the air force throwing and he's certainly having a good one today Drop on the 43 yard line is the navy fullback Adel average hit down by george pappas the second string fullback of the army Referee Kaufman, right now with time, they're bringing the yardsticks on for a measurement. The clock stops with two and a half minutes to go. Navy leading 9-0. They scored in the first quarter, two minutes and 42 seconds to go. There's a first down Navy. As they recovered a fumble on the Army 23, four plays later, Joe Bellino carried it over four yards to the touchdown. The kick was no good. The Navy drove again and finally kicked the field goal in fourth down by Greg Mather. That's been the scoring. Army is not threatened seriously. Pritchard is flanking. Spooner gives it off to Bellino. And Bellino still on his feet. Now well, that fella can run. Bellino, incidentally, is a great baseball player. He's a catcher and a fine hitter. And many major league clubs have been interested in his services. The only man in Navy history to score three touchdowns against the Army. Dick Myers come in and Bellino goes out as he gets a hand. Second down, a yard to go for the Navy. Pritchard flanking. Myers the wing back. Spooner is fading. That one is incomplete at the 15-yard line. The pass intended for Meyer. Kurt, let me explain two things on that. Number one, that was a perfect stop and go pass. And, and, and that is set up by the passer making a fake as well as the receiver. Secondly, at the top left of your screen, we mention this every week, and you can see by the shadows, that's the sun field. And the receiver didn't even go for the ball there. He lost it completely in the sun. Pritchard is flanking again. There's a quarterback sneak by Spooner to get the first down. Keep the ball. And give Navy a chance to score again in the tail end here of the first half. And Joe Bellino has come back into the game replacing Vic Meyer. Navy's ball, first down on the Army 30. Pritchard flanking, Spooner fading, a penalty mark is down, it's out to Pritchard. 
as he steps out of bounds, stopping the clock with a sideline pass, of course, here in the closing minute and 15 seconds. But we have penalty markers down, and let's see what they're for. Backfield in motion. Put the ball on the Army 35, makes it first down and 15. Here's the first period score, Georgia and Georgia Tech, nothing, nothing. And Navy leads in this game, the 61st Army-Navy game, by a score of nine to nothing. One minute and 12 seconds left to go in the first half. Pritchard flanking left this time. Swinner gives the ball to Bellino. Bellino to the 31-yard line. There's always that threat of Bellino to keep that defense guessing. 58 seconds as Navy calls time again to stop the clock. Each team is allowed five free timeouts and a half. And most teams, of course, save those timeouts for the situation such as this to stop the clock where they have a chance to score keep things going. Paul? Here's one of our favorite subjects, and that's the Navy. And it appears a favorite of many thousands of high school graduates who are planning to go to Navy any day now. I think one of the main reasons for Navy's popularity with young men is that it offers something new and totally different from the life they have known. On every new horizon, the Navy is in there with a wedge and into the future. The new streamlined Navy not only keeps up with the times, but ahead of them. It's true, some careers are almost as desirable, but since when is almost good enough for you? We were talking a little bit ago uh, about that quick pass to the flanker by Spooner, the Navy passer. These are things that are picked up all through the ball game by the quarterback as his receivers report to him. If a man is constantly flanking and the defender is playing him off five or seven or eight or ten yards, as has been happening in this case, there's no reason at all to report it to the quarterback, and he comes right up with that quick pass out there, and it's just a quick and easy five yards and a very safe pass. All right, here we go, second down 11 for the Navy in the last minute of the first half. Spooner is throwing deep. Bellino's out there, and he can't quite get it to the goal line. Joe Bellino diving at the goal line. Had a near shot at that one. Third, I believe he might have had a chance at that ball, but one of those inadvertent things happened, as will happen in a ball game. There was an official in the way, and he couldn't make that cut back in, and he ran over it. <laughs> We have a third down, 11 to go for the Navy. 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Navy ahead, 9 to nothing. Pritchard flanking. Spooner ran into one of his own backs, as you saw. There's a man wide open at the 15, and down to the 11-yard line is Pritchard. He can get himself open. The clock is moving with 35 seconds in the half. Pritchard, number 21, a very fine pass receiver. Navy's ball, first down on the 12-yard line of the Army and 25 seconds to go in the half. Spooner fires. That one is good for the touchdown to Jim Luther. Navy scores with 16 seconds to go. Navy started that drive with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the half. They used everything in the book, sideline passes, calling timeout, and they marched 54 yards. As Hal Spooner hit Jim Looper, the right end for the touchdown. And Navy leads now by a score of 19 to nothing. And they're going for two points. They have Pritchard flank. They pitch out. Bellino's trying to pass. Now lobs it back to Spooner. Spooner is over. Bellino with some quick thinking. Lateral back to Spooner. The man who first hit in the ball is going to try a halfback pass for Bellino throwing. As Joe Bellino not only uses his legs, but uses his head on that play. And Navy is out in front by a score of 21 to nothing. Kurt, that pass in that situation was an excellent call for this reason only. Not only did they get a touchdown out of it, that's what they wanted. But with the time running and less than 35 seconds to go, if they can't get it over the goal line, of course, the field goal attempt is the thing to do. And the only thing that will stop this clock in this case is an incomplete pass. 
so that when the pass was thrown, even though it had not gone for a score, if it were incomplete, the clock would have stopped and they would have had plenty of time to go for the field goal. Well, let me correct that uh, score I gave inadvertently. It is Navy 17, Army nothing. I beg your pardon. As uh, they scored to make it 15 nothing, went for the two points to make it 17 nothing. Greg Mather will kick off and Joe Blackgrove is deep with 17 seconds remaining. In the first half, Blackgrove takes it a yard in the end zone. He goes for the sideline to stop the clock. 12 seconds remaining in the half. Army's ball. Navy leading 17 0. They got a touchdown in the first quarter, a field goal, a touchdown here in the second quarter, and a two point successful try. Payne Hardison comes in to replace Greg Matter, who just kicked off. Hardison plays in the defensive secondary. A Army man goes off the field, Bill Whitehead. And George Jowen comes on to replace him as Whitehead gets a good hand. There's Dale Hall, and he'll have to regroup his forces at halftime. Try and stop this two-pronged Navy attack of the running of Bellino and the throwing of Hal Spooner, which has been devastating here in the second quarter. Landa throwing out of bounds on the 24 is Zubaita to stop the clock. Number 85, Matt Alavage is right along there with him. He didn't want to gamble, just let him go ahead and take the ball rather than try and maybe intercept and Zamaida go downfield for the long one. That's exactly right. Navy in this situation with just a couple of seconds to go is willing to give them anything up to 15 or 20 yards on a completion and not let them go for the long one. Army has about eight seconds remaining in the first half. Blackgrove had just come in. Now he's very fast. Let's see if they try and throw him a long one. He's number 44 and they're sending him out as a flanker. They might try and hit him with a long one. Bland is the quarterback. Landa dropping, and there's a long one, the black row. He's running deep, but he's well covered. He was smothered as he went downfield by Hardison. That was the strategy, number 44, little Joe Blackgrove, the fastest back in the Army team, try and hit him with a long one. We have one second remaining in the half, and Army still has a chance. Navy leading 17-0. It was 6-0 first quarter, 17-0 now. This will be the last play, unless something happens on it, of the first half. Split in right, black row, a flanking back left. Land of the throw. Arches another long one down to black row. It is incomplete. Incomplete at the 38-yard line. And that's the end of the first half here at Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia. The score is Navy 17 and Army nothing. Say, what'd you get for Uncle Harry? Oh, dear. Trust me to forget someone. Well, I'll take care of it. Relax, madam, because the nearby store has welcomed Gillette Christmas gifts. Like this gay set that includes everything a man needs for shaving comfort. A Gillette adjustable razor, a supply of super blue blades, and foamy instant lather, all for only $2.75. The adjustable razor has a micrometer dial with nine different settings. You adjust it instantly for any combination of skin and beard. There's a wonderfully acceptable gift. Or how about this cheery package of 50 double-edged super blue blades for only $3.45, or $30 for $2. What's better for the stocking or for very inexpensive gifts than the 195 adjustable razor or individual dispensers of Super Blues. Most stores display these and other Gillette Christmas gifts, from 69 cents or less up to $5 or more. Holy Cross leads BC 8-0 first quarter. South Carolina leads Wake Forest 8-7. And here at halftime, the Army-Navy game, a little bit later in the half, we're going to show you the outstanding plays of the first half, the key plays of the game, by videotape. Now, many of you have never seen the midshipmen and the cadets parade on field. It usually takes place an hour and a half before kickoff. It's a thrilling sight, and uh, one of the moments that has made the Army-Navy game such a great one. And so, by videotape, we are going to show you the pre-game parade of the midshipmen and the cadets, and let's go down to Bob Neal. 
friends, we're at halftime. As Kurt was telling you, part of the great excitement of this Army-Navy game is not only the football game, but the great parade which precedes the game. As a matter of fact, people from all over the country were out here at this beautiful Philadelphia Stadium at 8 o'clock this morning. They brought their breakfast, they brought their lunch, and they were here to watch the brigade of midshipmen and the Corps of Cadets. And so we've got some wonderful highlights for you. Let's take a look at what they saw this morning at this great pageant of color at the Army-Navy game. Yes, the fans were seated. They were looking on, and the music started to play. And there, of course, was the beginning. As the fans in the stands who had assembled so early, many of them bringing their lunches, bringing their youngsters with them, watched as the color guard representing the wonderful Corps of Cadets from West Point. The Corps of Cadets, the long gray line, coming into Philadelphia's great stadium. The Army band was here. It was the same band that saw Army leave West Point. The team sent off with a great parade, not only of the Corps of Cadets, the band, but five Army tanks, bidding the Army team farewell. The football certainly has been exceeded only by the fine precision marching of these young men, representing all sections of this great United States of ours. The long gray line which has presented to this great country of ours men like Grant, Lee, Pershing, Patton, MacArthur, and Eisenhower. These youngsters who uh, go through one of the most precise educational facilities at West Point where they must recite their lessons each day work in small classes of 12 to 15 men. And of course, the commanding superintendent of West Point is Major General William C. Westminster. Or Westmoreland, I beg your pardon. There's a wonderful long view of this tremendous bowl here at Philadelphia and the idea of the great pageantry as the folks had an opportunity to look at this wonderful corps of cadets, some 2,400 men strong. And down in the end zone, you can see how precise and careful the planning was as each of the various companies presented their colors. It certainly took careful execution and planning to get them precisely to each particular part. There was no confusion at all in each man knew exactly where he was to go, and each man did precisely move to his particular point. As the fans uh, stood uh, certainly at attention, they were at attention from the moment that these gates opened, watching uh, as the Army team took their prescribed uh, positions and the great uh, Corps of Cadets taking their positions in the stadium. They waited even with eager anticipation, like waiting uh, for some great star to come out of the wings of a theater, as the Navy team began to assemble. And here was the middies, the middies coming in with their great color guard. The Navy Brigade of Midshipmen, some 3,600 strong. They came here to Philadelphia in 100 buses, and we tried to figure it out in our mathematics that that would uh, stretch out about three quarters of a mile. Fans uh, certainly had an opportunity to cheer the precise marching of the fine cities who have Rear Admiral John F. Davidson as their superintendent. Watching this great pageantry today, all the way out to California on ABC, is uh, Admiral Chester Nimitz, who is also a graduate of Annapolis. And here come the middies, who have presented to this great country of ours such men as Bo Halsey, Admiral King, Mr. Nimitz, Admiral Arleigh Burke, who's here today. And the wonderful contrast to the white caps and the blue uniforms and the white gloves certainly set off a great, indeed, colorful, precise timing in their marching. I often wondered who washes the gloves. detail and the 
symmetry of motion that these young men do represent. And there's a wonderful brigade. They're all in companies, you'll notice. Each one comes to its uh, prescribed uh, point. not only know how to march, look uh, very attractive, and also go through a very uh, difficult and rigid academic course, as do the men of honor. Yes, the typical boy, USA, is a nitty from Annapolis. Could be your son, boy down the street. And the color guard certainly caused everyone to not only anticipate this great game, but to reflect on the glory of old glory. you have an idea of why not only is the Army-Navy game a great football battle, but the pregame color, which is so exciting, which presents the traditional rivalry of the Corps of Cadets and the Brigade of Midshipmen. There's the white caps. color, some of the excitement, some of the activity that was here earlier today. And the second half of this football game yet to come on a big Army-Navy day. The brigade of midshipmen moving off. And at halftime, the score with Navy leading. Now let's go back up to Paul Christmas. In just a moment, we'll be back with more of the halftime festivities here at Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hi. This year, there are two ways to give l and First, your cigarette dealer has attractive holiday gift cartons like these. And new this year, two cartons of l and Kings with a free Christmas record attached. It's a 33 and a third RPM recording of five favorite Christmas carols, sung in old-time harmony by our l and quartet. Listen. Sound of Christmas. The taste of L and M. Brought together in this special holiday gift pack. You buy two cartons of L and M Kings, you get our Christmas record free. Only your L and M dealer has it, but his supplies are limited. See him soon. This is Kurt Gowdy, along with Paul Christman and Bob Neal, here at Philadelphia Stadium. Remember, NCAA College Football is brought to you each week by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the remarkable Super Blue Blade that gives you all but unbelievable shaving comfort. And by L&M, let your taste come alive. Reach for flavor, reach for L&M. And by... The Humble Oil and Refining Company with 30,000 happy motoring stations coast to coast. And now let's pause for station identification. A chiseling sculptress plays a part in the mystery of a missing judge in the Roaring Twenties. That's the Roaring Twenties. Tonight on ABC. Time, Navy out in front by a score of 17 to nothing. 
Here we are at halftime with Navy out in front of Army, 17 to nothing. And in just a moment or two, we're going to show you by videotape the highlight plays of the first half of the 61st meeting between Army and Navy. Now, you'll remember earlier in the game, Army kicked out on the Navy one-yard line, and now we're going to show you a play that really demonstrates the tremendous running ability of Navy's All-American Joe Bellino. This will be the longest game from scrimmage in the game for 57 yards, and I think Paul Christman will agree with me that Bellino's one of the best running backs he's ever seen. He is, Kurt, and pay close attention to the way he sidesteps and moves laterally on this. Watch this real quick. It's a very good example. Watch him jump sideways. There he goes. Look at him. Get out of those tackles. Number 27. He's being chased by Adams, number 16, who missed him. Kirschenbauer finally bulldogs him down. That's what it was, a bulldozing tackle. And this is about what you have to do with him. As you mentioned, Kurt, he has tremendous legs. And as I mentioned earlier, too, I think he is probably the uh, best sidestepping running back. He has great speed, too, since Charlie Trippy. And uh, as I mentioned also, he's a little bit heavier than Trippy, and he's also built a little closer to the ground. At a low center of gravity, he's real tough to bring down. He moves uh, in all directions real well. He doesn't break his stride too much. And this is uh, the mark of a great runner because most men lose a lot of time when they start moving laterally. This fellow doesn't. He cuts that square corner. He can really go. Well, that play uh, brought Navy out of a hole. They went to the Army 12. They were stopped. Try to field goal a little bit later. Navy recovers a fumble, and here's Mr. Bellino in action again. Then the first touchdown of the game. Into the end zone, four yards. He scored three last year, and he gets one today, Paul. And you notice that last one-yard lunge there. He just, he just couldn't, he would not be stopped on that. Incidentally, Joe's family, there's his mother, Mrs. Bellino, and his family. His brother is a great athlete at Winchester High School. And they've sort of dominated. Hello, folks. Uh, the Bellino family right now mighty proud and happy. But, of course, Army still has something to say about it in the second half. And as we said, Bellino is the most famous midshipman in the history of West Point. As for the last two weeks, signs all over West Point stopped Bellino. But Bellino, in the first half, has gained 82 yards rushing. He's averaged eight yards a carry. But we've also had another player on that Navy team that a former great passer, Paul Christman, I know, admires his work in the first half. The quarterback, Hal Spooner, has completed 12 out of 18 passes, Paul. This is kind of what we expected, Kurt, because as we mentioned, Spooner is not known as a, as a great passer. He hasn't uh, been a great passer all year, but he threw a fine ball and impressed us very much in that Air Force game, which we saw earlier in the season. And as I mentioned also, he has that very important thing, that timing on getting the ball away on time. He does it beautifully. Gets the ball there, and no matter how it looks, all the, uh, the gentlemen who coach this ball game will tell you if the ball gets there, it, it can be thrown sideways. They don't care. Toward the end of the first half, Navy, as you know, is racing against the clock. They made a drive of 54 yards as they were out in front. And uh, if we get time here and the facilities, we're going to try and show you Spooner in action again for Navy's last touchdown of the first half to... They're fine right in, number 82, Jim Looper. Paul, I think one of the surprises maybe earlier in the game was Army not passing as much as we thought they might, but we'll see in the second half. But right now, we're going back here by videotape and see if we can pick up another one of the key plays. Here is Army on defense, Navy with about 20 seconds to go in the half. Watch Spooner rifle that thing in here now. Here he is firing, and Looper right on the goal line falls into the end zone. That's the Navy... Last touchdown of the half. They got two points, and the halftime score stands. Navy 17 and Army nothing. Uh, the uh, Army team has attempted just seven passes, uh, completed three, while Navy's attempted 19 and completed 12. But Paul Christman will give you more of a recap and the statistics of the first half. Here we are at halftime with Navy out in front of Army, 17 to nothing. And in just a moment or two, we're going to show you by videotape the highlight plays of the first half of the 61st meeting between Army and Navy. Now, you'll remember earlier in the game, Army kicked out on the Navy one-yard line, and now we're going to show you a play that really demonstrates the tremendous running ability of Navy's All-American, Joe Bellino. This will be the longest game from scrimmage in the game for 57 yards, and I think Paul Crispin will agree with me that Bellino's one of the best running backs he's ever seen. He is, Kurt, and pay close attention to the way he sidesteps and moves laterally on this. Watch this real quick. It's a very good example. Watch him jump sideways. There he goes. 
Look at him get out of those tackles. Number 27. He's being chased by Adams, number 16, who missed him. Kirschenbauer finally bulldogs him down. That's what it was, a bulldozing tackle. And this is about what you have to do with him. As you mentioned, Kurt, he has tremendous legs. And as I mentioned earlier, too, I think he is probably the uh, best sidestepping running back. He has great speed, too, since Charlie Trippy. And uh, as I mentioned also, he's a little bit heavier than Trippy, and he's also built a little closer to the ground. At a low center of gravity, he's real tough to bring down. He moves uh, in all directions real well. He doesn't break his stride too much. And this is uh, the mark of a great runner because most men lose a lot of time when they start moving laterally. This fellow doesn't. He cuts that square corner. He can really go. Well, that play uh, brought Navy out of a hole. They went to the Army 12. They were stopped. Try to field goal a little bit later. Navy recovers a fumble, and here's Mr. Bellino in action again. Then the first touchdown of the game. Into the end zone, four yards. He scored three last year, and he gets one today, Paul. And you notice that last one-yard lunge there. He just he just couldn't, he would not be stopped on that. Incidentally, Joe's family, there's his mother, Mrs. Bellino, and his family. His brother is a great athlete at Winchester High School. And they've sort of dominated. Hello, folks. Uh, the Bellino family right now, mighty proud and happy. But, of course, Army still has something to say about it in the second half. And as we said, Bellino is the most famous midshipman in the history of West Point. As for the last two weeks, signs all over West Point stopped Bellino. But Bellino, in the first half, has gained 82 yards rushing. He's averaged eight yards a carry. But we've also had another player on that Navy team that a former great passer, Paul Christman, I know, admires his work in the first half. The quarterback, Hal Spooner, has completed 12 out of 18 passes, Paul. This is kind of what we expected, Kurt, because as we mentioned, Spooner is not known as a, as a great passer. He hasn't uh, been a great passer all year, but he threw a fine ball and impressed us very much in that Air Force game, which we saw earlier in the season. And as I mentioned also, he has that very important thing, that timing on getting the ball away on time. He does it beautifully. Gets the ball there, and no matter how it looks, all the, uh, the gentlemen who coach this ball game will tell you if the ball gets there, it can be thrown sideways. They don't care. Toward the end of the first half, Navy, as you know, is racing against the clock. They made a drive of 54 yards as they were out in front. And uh, if we get time here and the facilities, we're going to try and show you Spooner in action again for Navy's last touchdown of the first half to... Their fine ride in, number 82, Jim Looper. Paul, I think one of the surprises maybe earlier in the game was Army not passing as much as we thought they might, but we'll see in the second half. But right now we're going back here by videotape and see if we can pick up another one of the key plays. Here is Army on defense, Navy with about 20 seconds to go in the half. Watch Spooner rifle that thing in here now. Here he is firing, and Looper right on the goal line falls into the end zone. That's the Navy... Last touchdown of the half. They got two points, and the halftime score stands. Navy 17 and Army nothing. Uh, the uh, Army team has attempted just seven passes, uh, completed three, while Navy's attempted 19 and completed 12. But Paul Christman will give you more of a recap and the statistics of the first half. we did in the pregame a lot of stunts going on here during the half first, the first downs here comes the army team out and that cannon signals their arrival each time and they're getting a fine cheer incidentally from their own uh, classmates I was just going to mention the Navy has 11 first downs to Army's five and the net yards gained rushing Navy has 75 and Army 56 we spoke a little earlier about the fact that uh, the Army has only thrown three or four passes in the first half. Now, Tom Blanda is a very fine passer, and whether his coach has decided that they should go with a running game, we don't know, but he has not thrown much yet. But he has the ability to throw, and with this Navy lead, I rather suspect that we're going to see quite a bit of Army passing in the second half. One 
thing you will note about this ball game, and that is neither side ever loses its, its enthusiasm, no matter what the score is. Now, in just a minute, we'll be set for the start of the second half from Philadelphia Stadium, where the score is Navy 17 and Army nothing. Tires that grip the road so well, you can't make them squeal. Just one of the many reasons why the revolutionary No Squeal Atlas Bucron Tire is such a tremendous success. Since their introduction last year, Atlas Bucron Tires have chalked up almost a billion consumer-tested miles, proving that they do ride, stop, look, and last like no others. Motorists were amazed at the safer stopping power of Atlas Bucron Tires. Why these tires actually stop faster on wet pavement than ordinary tires do on dry. And drivers praised Atlas Bucron tires for their comfort. As these special films show, while ordinary tires bounce over rough roads, Atlas Bucron tires literally flow over them, giving you the quietest, smoothest, most comfortable ride ever. And yet, they cost less than most premium tires. So see these remarkable Atlas Bucron tires at your SO dealers. They're another important reason why the SO sign is the world's first choice. 